Hey, welcome back everybody to another exciting Duckman Cycles NVW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> well, we've got Eleanor's engine here behind me and the car show is coming up and it's not but, oh, I don't know, five or six days away from me recording this video. So by the time you're watching it, yeah, you know that I'm hurrying as fast as I can to try to get as much done as possible. And what we're working on today is the industrial tins. Now these turned out to be so damn easy to make. I mean, look, look, look how many bends I had to put in it. Really, uh, let me show you how easy it was to make these. And really that's all there was to it. So I didn't even bother documenting the individual process because they were that easy. They really were. <laughs> so we're going to install these suckers on here. They still need to be painted. I just want to make sure everything fits right. I think it's going to be okay, but tomorrow's video will probably be all painted, mounted, and ready to go. But uh, I guess that's it for now. So licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get updates every time I have a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back right after the intro with a little more fun stuff. We've got a lot of things coming up this week. Thanks for watching. Here's a little exhaust block off plates, wherever the hell the camera is. Ooh, look at that. There. These are uh, quickly cut. I'm going to clean them up a little bit with the grinder, make sure everything fits nicely. But this one drops right in here, and this one should drop right in here and it looks like the fitment of them is pretty good they just need to be prettied round up the edges on them a little bit run a couple of screws in them here and we'll see just how they fit and I think they're gonna be fine I mean I had been test fitting them the whole while while I was cutting them that one looks like it's gonna be okay Having a fit minute issue? Nope, never mind. Went in there just fine. Alright, nice fat tip screwdriver because everybody always bitches and complains when I'm not using a fat tip. Everybody gets more satisfaction when I rip out the old fat tip. Uh, snug that one up. I need to put a screw here on the end. Wonder where it went. I might have used it somewhere else by accident. <laughs> Alright, then we'll come over here, snug this one up too. Right. Don't mind all the noise in the background, you guys. That's the reason why I run background music. It's because people are always doing something obnoxious when I'm trying to record. That's just the way this neighborhood is. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. Stops all that hot air from underneath and getting inside the cool engine compartment. All right, those are good start. Let me show you them up. Now these were a little more complex than the industrial tins that I put down underneath. And one of the reasons is because I wrapped them around the sides, so they self-center. I need to put that screw in. That's really bothering me. But uh, you see that the fitment is good. It should keep that hot air out. The one down on this side is looking. Pretty much exactly the same. And then it wraps around in here. They still need to be sanded down or strip the paint off of them. And then uh, put a nice coat of paint on them. I'm just going to paint them just like black. I don't have a mix of this color anymore. Otherwise, I would just paint them that. But yeah, I didn't make enough to have any for, you know, repairs and extra parts and anything else. In fact, I even dinged it right there, which really upsets me. But I'll touch it up with just a different color. Nobody will notice. Maybe I just rub a little grease on it. <laughs> Alright, let's get to the industrial tins down underneath and see how those fit. Let's go ahead and put this one in here. Because this just looks so unfinished. There it is. Now it pulled that all together real nicely. Good. I'm satisfied with that. Alright. Let's try the industrial tin over here on this side. And these are not exact mirror images of themselves because they're two different size tins. Yes, I know, I still need to paint them. I still need to strip off whatever rust and stuff that's on here too. But, 
Cylinders one and two are actually a little more rear bound than the ones on the opposite side. So I made this, as you can see, it's only got about three bends in it, and then one kind of uh, scallop, you know, cut on the side here. And we'll show you how that all lines up in a second. But they just simply slide right in here, just like that. And, oh man. Again, I have been cutting, fitting, cutting, fitting, cutting, fitting. And everything should drop right in here without too big of a problem. Matter of fact, they actually look like they installed better than some of the OEM tins on this uh, engine. <laughs> Not to be much of a surprise because, well, I made them. All right. That looks like a good fit. Let me show you that up close. All right, there's the tin installed. There's that cut I was telling you about, which happens to line up with the sled. It goes in here nicely. Two screws go down into the sled tin underneath. I probably cut it just a little bit long. I think I can shorten it by about half an inch if I care. It's one of those things, again, you're not going to see, and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit long. But the goal here is to keep the radiant heat from the exhaust from getting to the pushrod tubes in the head. So that's going to do exactly that. So that looks like it's a good fit. Let's go ahead and head over to the other side. There we go. Coming up. This should get through here just like that. This one was such a different fit than the opposite side. Everything just lined up so much differently. In fact, I might even like it better because of the way that pieces of sheet metal overlap. It kind of makes them a little secure and a little stronger in a way. And for whatever it's worth, these uh, panels will also block debris from hitting the engine. I mean, I shouldn't say the engine. I mean, this is the engine. But stop debris from getting into the pushrod tubes. Because you don't want your pushrod tubes getting ruined when you're out on the road. Kids are climbing on the hood of their car over there. I hear the metal flexing in it. Glad it's not my car. That's one of the reasons why Eleanor is not outside today. There's gonna be little kids running around throwing sticks and rocks and screaming and climbing on shit like little. Yeah. We're not taking Eleanor out, no. And I've got work to do too, so I'll be doing it in the morning when all the kids are in school, right? That would be the smart time to do it. <laughs> Okay, that's in there. Looks like we're secure. I like that it doesn't rattle or ring. Uh, let me show you is. Up close Wrapped around, here. there's that scallop cut that I was telling you about over here on the side. Again, I cut it just a little long. I could zing it off if I want to, if I even care. But again, the whole idea was to keep the radiant heat from the exhaust out of the pushrod tubes. You don't want it to heat up your oil. I can probably bend this a little bit better. In fact, you know what, that did it. This was just sagging a little bit and pulling down the industrial tin that I made. Yeah, I could have just bought a set of these for 30 bucks, but I mean, I made them in what, 30 minutes? <laughs> Three bends each and just a couple cuts, a few measurements. It wasn't hard at all. In fact, these were a lot harder. A lot more work that went into those. Still need to plug these guys off here. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Sure, I could just bolt the cover on it, but I might just cut it and weld it. I don't plan on ever putting a uh, single carburetor on here ever again. So, I don't know. I guess I probably should test the carburetors first because if I want to get to the show and a single carburetor is the only option, then maybe I should wait, right? <laughs> right oh, while I was at it, I put the rear tin or technically the front tin back on because it was missing two screws and I don't know why I had it off, but anyway, it was off and now it's reattached. Much happier. Just looks more complete. Anyway, I gotta put the rubber grommet in there too that wraps around this here. And then there's a seal that goes around this piece. And there's a little piece of weather stripping I need to put on the inside of this too, but the shroud is not yet permanently attached because the alternator still needs to be finished. There's no fan in there. That's right, I got a fan that I'm fresh painting up the stuff in there. So we'll get that squared up shortly. Uh, 
All right, very nice. This is coming out really, really beautiful. I'm happy with it, very happy with it. I love the fact that it's a color that nobody else has. It's very similar to uh, the Dodge gunmetal color that they have on some of the Challengers. In fact, I had a gunmetal Challenger back in 2018, 2019 for about a month. Yeah, it was one of them quick flippy things. I got it real cheap, I didn't like it. Didn't have a limited slip in it, so it would just do a burnouts of one wheel. Yeah, anyway, it's gone. <laughs> but this is coming together. I'm going to, need to order a new set of these. I need to get the engine in the car ASAP because if I need to order them, it might be two or three days shipment, you know, from like Amazon if I were to get these things. Or maybe I can pick them up from a local auto parts place if they have them. I don't know. So that's really a little bit of a troubling thing. The air cleaner also on this side looks like it's burnt. And I didn't notice that until I actually soaked these things. And once they were soaked in the ultrasonic cleaner, it took off all the dirt. So you could see all the spots that were really dark. So this appears it has some kind of a fire on it. And that's probably why the previous owner took these carburetors off. There's an engine fire and he just stripped everything down and that's where I ended up with what I got. Anyway, I'm not gonna use these air cleaners, not just for that reason, but also the fact that whenever I shake them, just big pieces of sand fall out of them. And I've scrubbed them and cleaned them and everything else and it doesn't seem to matter and the sand's falling out of the inside of them. In fact, if I look down inside of here, yeah, you can see some of the bits. Yeah, they're in there, so this thing is falling apart. No, I'm not worried about stuff getting in there right now because I still have the heads are packed with some uh, cotton that I put in there just to stop dirt and debris from falling down. So if anything gets in there, it's really not an issue at this moment. All right, there's our engine, 1600 dual port. I'm gonna take you around the backyard and show you a few other things that we got going on. And then we're gonna wrap up this video. And as I said, we're gonna have a lot more videos this week, probably up to one a day. Maybe for more than that, I don't know, I guess we'll see. Depends on how much I get done and uh, how many videos I can crank out. But with the show coming up, I gotta get a lot of stuff done very, very quickly. Those kids keep climbing on the hood of that car. <laughs> All right, well, let's step in the backyard and I'll show you what we got going on. All right, over here we got our CV joint bolts. I need to change them all out on Eleanor because we have those Chinese ones on there. And you might remember what happened to Ruby earlier this year when my Chinese CV joint bolts broke. So I'm not going with any of that Chinese stuff on Eleanor, not good enough. I put them in the Ultrasonic cleaner, as you might have remembered, and the ultrasonic cleaner instruction said, do not put powerful nor flammable solvents inside the tank. So I didn't. I just filled it with water. I always soak these things in some kind of like lacquer thinner or maybe even just a little bit of gasoline, which is a big no-no. Don't do that, guys. Don't listen to anything Duckman says. But since I didn't want to put those into the ultrasonic cleaner, instead I put them into a can, which had the solvent in it, and then simply double boiled it and Biddy screaming, as always. But anyway, that did a pretty good job. I didn't even bother to hit the heat button on it. But anyway, they're nice and clean. They came out pretty good. A few of them, these things here, had some stuff caked on it pretty heavily, so I'll just wire wheel them off. No big deal, but otherwise, these just need a little bit of polishing in the wire wheel, maybe a little bit of acid treatment, and if I want to go nuts, I can paint the heads on them. Otherwise, these are ready to rock. All right, you guys, I'm headed out to a dinner over at Ranchero 302 Me's house. He invited me over for some homemade chili. And the weather has been cool. It's been down in the low 50s this morning, so that means people here in Florida are breaking out their winter parkas. I think that's ridiculous. You wouldn't see me in a parka until it's down in the 40s, but you know, 50s, really? Anything below 60 degrees here, people wearing those big, you know, goose down coats. Uh, silly, but that's Florida people for you. <laughs> Linky, like, you comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the eagle bellies. You get up there. So don't forget to pluck the dingle bellies to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out Doug Shit down there for all my different social media links. And, uh, well, we'll be back with a new video tomorrow. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time.